Welcome back everyone to the Blackboard series. Today we're talking about the submarine main ballast tank system and how it works on all submarines. Remember this series is not about any one submarine. It is about, that's terrible. Let's try that again. It's about all submarines. Every submarine has main ballast tanks and they all work pretty much the same way. So this is just gonna be a general overview and we're gonna add that little curve on the front. Actually, let's, let's not do that. Let's, let's back up from that. That's a little bit too much curve. It needs to come down a little bit and then it gets all fast. You know, submarines go faster when they have more curves, just like this. So this is our submarine here. And every submarine will have a forward and aft main ballast tank group. So what that means is, is there is a pressurized compartment and then there's the main ballast tanks, which are free flood areas outside of that. And the, the pressurized compartment is where all the people are, like Leroy here. Here's Leroy with his little happy hat on. We'll give him a hat today. Yeah, you're not supposed to wear your hat in control, but um, he's going he's gonna to do it anyway because he, he's a wild man. He's off the chain. And he's at the BCP. This is the ballast control panel. The ballast control panel is the panel that we use to control pretty much all the tanks on board any submarine uh, and the main ballast tanks that we're going to talk about today. So this is the pressurized compartment where the people are. Uh, this is the one that can withstand pressures, you know, down to hundreds or thousands of feet, depending on your class of submarine. And outside of that are the main ballast tanks. So every main ballast tank system is operates the same way. It has vents at the top up here and it has grates. We'll keep it green. It has these grates at the bottom down here. Now, a big thing is, is these grates down here are open to see. You cannot shut a grate. It's like a screen door. There is no glass door or valve behind it. These things are open to see all the time. So whenever a submarine is on the surface, what every submarine does is it opens up these vents at the top here and lets the air that is inside the main ballast tank out. Well, what is pushing that air out? Well, it is the seawater that is in here. Seawater comes up from the bottom because remember, these are open to sea. And so as the air that was just sitting there in the tank, keeping the water from coming in, because it's at the same pressure as uh, surface pressure, right? The moment we let that air escape, the seawater can come in and fill it up, fills up the main ballast tank here. Just like that, once a submarine has done that, it becomes negatively buoyant. And shockingly, not by much, I have been on a submarine myself where we did this procedure and did not submerge. We had to pull back into port and get some ballast, lead weights, and load hundreds of these little things that each weighed like 50 pounds. They were pretty heavy. And we spent hours as a crew putting lead weight into the bottom of the submarine near the torpedo room so that we could go out and actually submerge. So most submarines have a lot of what's called reserve buoyancy. That's kind of beyond the topic of what we're talking about today. But just know that even whenever you flood forward and aft main ballast tanks, your submarine's just barely going under. You got to add some additional weight if you want to do it fast. Now, let's zoom in, let's go to another page here, and let's kind of zoom in on one main ballast tank group and talk about its operation. Because both the forward and main ballast tanks of any submarine, any one submarine, they'll operate identical to each other because it's one system operating both. So we can focus on just the forward group, the forward main ballast tank group here. We got our little speed curve on the sail and the sail goes up out of frame. And then here is the pressure hull. Who's inside the pressure hall? Our friend Leroy is. He's in here. He's happy. He's a happy man. He's got his dolphins now. That doesn't mean he's safe, but it means he can wear his hat cockeyed. That's what that means. Let's give him some dolphins. Leroy's got some dolphins, which is probably the scariest day in the Navy. But eventually, Leroy's going to have dolphins. Still got to watch the guy. All right, but he's operating the main ballast tank panel here, the BCP. The BCP is one of the only areas on the submarine where one man can wreck the sub. So of course he's gonna have a close eye overwatch on him. Now, we're submerged. So in a submerged state, this is what the state uh, looks like. We have the vents up here and the vents are shut. Remember we have the grates down here, but what is unique about the grates? It is an open metal grate, like a screen door is open. There is a mesh there, but it is very, open. It's very thick. Uh, as a matter of fact, fish can swim into a main ballast tank while you are underway. If you are 
so uh, slow, say you're doing 200 feet and you're five knots and you're in the Caribbean, where you have lots of little tropical tiny fish, they can swim into your ballast tank, you know, blow some bubbles and stuff and swim back out again if they wanted to. That is the condition of, of the bottom. There's no way to shut these at the bottom. Absolutely none. That is something that will blow the minds of many people. They'll say, isn't that kind of dangerous? Wouldn't you want to shut that at some point? Well, you would, but a system to do that would cause noise, uh, would be an additional load on the submarine in terms of hydraulic load and air load to operate a system like that. By simply having grates down there that don't move, have no mechanical parts whatsoever, it's very quiet. That's the, that's the risk you take. Okay, so we're going to say that the main ballast tank is full. Blah, 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 blah. Look at that, it's full up. And so now we're underway, we're doing our thing, and we're going to get ready to pull into port. So one of the things that most ports like with their submarines is to have them on the surface when they pull in. So the captain would go to control, tell the officer deck, uh, prepare to surface the submarine, submarine, and then they go through the procedure. This takes a little bit of while. And then if you want to do it fast... Uh, before you rig for surface, you can just blow the main ballast tanks. This is done regularly uh, as a test. Like you got to make sure this system works because this system is going to be one of the major ones that saves your bacon in an emergency. So let's see how this works. Let's begin with um, a main ballast tank emergency blow system has large cylinders of air, high pressure air already stored, ironically, inside the main ballast tank them themselves. We'll just draw a number of these. These are kind of off to the side so water can get in. They don't take up the entire main ballast tank, but there's multiple of them. They're all connected together when they come inside the boat. And then up here, they can blow air into the main ballast tank right there. So obviously there's a series of controls that the main ballast tank control panel has to uh, control that. There's also a series of Valves to keep, whoops, to keep things from happening, like uh, air leaking from the system. So we got some isolation valves here. And then we have a pipe, essentially, that goes into the main ballast tank where the air can come out. And, of course, there are valves on that as well. So whenever we conduct an emergency high-pressure blow or emergency surface, it is also called, we want to blow air into the main ballast tank there. This air is coming from uh, the bank of high pressure air banks that is in the, um, the main ballast tank themselves. And with this valve shut, the one at the top, remember this one stays shut, where do you think the water is gonna go if we're blowing high pressure air at a higher pressure than sea pressure, and that's key, to the water that's inside the ballast tank? So a quick note, is the water inside the ballast tank because this is a free flood grate is the same as the water around you. So if you're sitting there at 200 feet pressure, the, the water inside the main ballast tank is at that same pressure. So you would want to blow air at a higher pressure than it is at your current depth. So we're going to get rid of a couple of those. Now the air or the water rather is going to come right back out the vent that it came into whenever you dove the submarine the first time when you were on the surface, filling up the main ballast tank with air. This greatly reduces the amount of uh, tonnage on board the submarine. You're still displacing the same amount of water because that's the outer hull, the shape of the submarine, but now you weigh significantly less, a thousand you know, tons less. And so that gives you the buoyancy you need to get your butt to the surface, but it is very important that you keep that vent shut at the top. Now, there are a couple of questions that I'm sure some of you have, is that if this is a pipe right here that is uh, shooting air into the tank, whenever it's not shooting air, won't that fill up with water if it's an open pipe? Well, yes, if it was an open pipe, it would, but there's a little more to it than this. There are special um, valves and attachments on this system that keep that from happening, because if you didn't, what would happen when you shot high press pressurized compressed air into a system full of fluid, like a main ballast tank, you would get uh, a significant icing effect on the pipe itself. Because as air, as compressed air expands, it gets very cold very fast uh, to the point of freezing, freezing water. So we have um, 
tools in place to, to keep that from happening. That's kind of beyond the scope here, but I know that that's going to be one of the questions you guys uh, bring up. Another question was on a forum that I visit occasionally called uh, Submarines Subreddit. And about a month ago, an older sailor, a guy older than me from the 637 generation and the Nautilus generation, um, was saying, as a trivia question, what is the purpose of the captain's air flask? And many of you put some great answers on there. Some of you are fellow submariners, but I think have forgotten a key purpose of the captain's air flask. And that's actually part of this system here. So we're going to bring that up today just to answer that uh, one-month-old trivia question uh, that I didn't see anybody get, but um, maybe maybe somebody will now. Uh, because he was offering a book or something if you did. So the captain's air flask is going to be right here. Let's make sure we're on the right color. And we are. Captain's air flask is right here. So one of the reasons why it's called the captain's air flask is that it's located in the CO stateroom. You have to actually lower his bunk, take off an outboard panel to get to the valve that is controlling uh, or goes from the CO's air flask. And the CO's air flask is very small. It does not store much energy, but it is vital to the survival of the submarine, uh, which may be why it's located where it is. So nobody can open this valve without the CO's permission. You need the CO's permission to operate the system anyway. The purpose of the CO's air flask is to operate pneumatically, that's with air, these valves right here. And there's enough energy, enough compressed air in the CO's air flask to open these valves and shut them multiple times. And it is a last ditch effort. If all other systems failed, you don't have electricity, you don't have hydraulics, uh, you've lost every other air system on board the submarine and you're sinking, you need to get to the surface. You still have these tanks right here full of very high pressure air. And these tanks are large. They have a lot of air in them and it's compressed. And the only way you have remaining, because you've lost all your other systems, is to get this air into the main ballast tanks. You go to the CO stateroom, you open that valve, and you can cycle those valves that let air into the main ballast tank a few more times. It's your last chance of getting back to the surface. And that's the purpose of the CO's air flask. So those of you on the uh, submarine subreddit, put that down in your answer and you should get a book from uh, the gentleman that posted the question. It was a great question. I had kind of forgot about it. And part of the reason why we're talking about this system today is because of that uh, subreddit. So good job, guys. All right, so let's go back to, uh, and just look at this operation in general. We see we have the water coming in here because we opened up the vents and uh, we know that we had, you know, the, the tanks in here that which fed towards the bal main ballast tank control panel and then fed air into the forward group. And then there is also a header that goes the entire length of the submarine to the aft group where we also have, like I said, there's air banks back here as well. And they run the entire length of the submarine to the ballast control panel. Everything is controlled by the ballast control panel, which today is Leroy, which should give you all uh, a little bit of concern. <laughs> and that's how you get air or in water rather in and out of the main ballast tank system. And this is the system that's used to increase your weight, your tonnage, a thousand, over a thousand tons in most cases for larger submarines and uh, push you either to the surface through buoyancy or help you submerge by bringing on all that extra weight. And that's why submarines have two different tonnages. They have a surface tonnage and a submerged tonnage. And the submerged tonnage will always be higher on a submarine because it's how it submerges with this system. All right. Now, my trivia question to you is, this is not the first blackboard we've done. I want you to look at pictures of um, submarines and list me three things that are also in a main ballast tank, but not necessarily a part of the main ballast tank blow system. What runs through a ballast tank? Give me three things that might be in here or a little bit forward of it, or maybe some pointy things that come out the top of the submarine that are also in the main ballast tank. All right, we'll see what you come up with. Thanks for watching everybody. This has been Blackboard and I'm teaching you guys how to be submariners. Have a good one. Oh, and if you wanna learn more about submarines, check out this video right here.